Right, Graham. So, how many years have you been running Chester Sports Cars for? Uh, Chester Sports Cars was formed in 2000, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, that was the, the year when uh, we developed the association with Tiger Racing. Um, right. Peter Pan. Yeah. Uh, have you always been a Tiger agent in terms of Supercat, or has it been everything? Uh, we first started off building every model of, uh, of the Tiger range. Mm. So we built uh, the first car was actually a Super 6, mm-hmm. second car was a Super Cat, and then we had quite a lot more Super Cats. Uh, we built B6s, we built R6s, we built Avons. Uh, we pretty much put every sort of engine in those cars mm. you can imagine. So how, many, how many Tigers do you reckon you've built or kits sold then <coughs> in total? Uh, we bought 110 oh. kits from Tiger in that period. Um, and and, at the uh, height of you, of the good times, the boom times. How, how many? First you year we sold uh, twenty kits or built twenty cars altogether. Oh, um, second not... year was pretty much the same. Third year wasn't far off that as well. So how long do you reckon it takes you to build something like a car, a super cat? Well, if, if we've got everything ready, uh, we can put a car together in in two weeks. For, um, in other words, eighty hours. Yeah. You know, and that is from uh, bare chassis right the way up to uh, turnkey car, everything. So after building all those, is there anything you've improved on then? Have you, have you, have you made your own way forward with the, the, the Supercat for example? Or have you, did you just stick to the rule book only in the manual? Um, early on we, we found that the Supercat was more versatile than any of the other cars in that uh, in the, the leg room was long. And by uh, modifying the Sierra pedals, uh, basically v-notching them and bending them forward and re-welding them we could get people up to six foot four in these super cats mm. right which was, was not the case with uh, a lot of the other models the avon was shorter super six was, was, was much tighter in the in the leg room so therefore we were catering for what i call the, the taller person and of course um, the human race is getting taller every year so therefore we we, we need to cater for that and mm. we did um, we also liked it that the Tiger changed it to change the Supercat to an XL version, where they they added uh, about four inches on the actual width across the hip of the car, uh, which meant that you could take the wider bottom person as well. Um, so that was useful as well. So so, so the so, so the Supercat, the Supercat XL, tended to be the one that we concentrated more on. Now, what other things you've like, developed with it then? I understand you've done things with, like the steering column from the Sierra. Well, the, 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 the very early Sierras were, were all fixed steering columns so with no adjustment. Then a Pinto engine and a Type 9 gearbox, discs on the front, drums on the back. But as uh, the Sierra got evolved, um, Ford introduced an adjustable column. So we had to find a way of, 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 of making that adjustable column work on the car. And we do. So in other words... I've got quite a, a room of adjustment and in and out as well. So there it means that, that people can, can pull the column up and down to suit themselves. And it's, it's not, a, not a difficult thing to do. Mm. Uh, we also found out that, that um, the dashboard arrangement that uh, Tiger encouraged us to use wasn't perhaps as, as easy to uh, put together. So. We went for a, a central arrangement on the dials. Uh, we, we used a thick piece of plywood, which has got IVA rubber on the bottom edge. And we also cut the scuttle uh, to leave a, an inch flange all the way around. So in actual fact, this dashboard, when these screws are undone, comes forward and down, and all the wiring is straight on the dials. So in other words, you take the steering wheel off, you can put the dashboard down, put all the dials in, wire all the back of it, and then just put it back into place again. Um, the original roll bar w- was, w- was simply a single hoop that was secured onto uh, the box section here by M8 bolts. Uh, and we didn't consider that that was uh, adequate in the event of, of the car actually rolling, which in truth would take a lot of doing. So we developed uh, these uh, back and angle braces that run down and locate onto the uh, the rear chassis, uh, which not only provide um, lateral deflection and stiffness, uh, but actually brace it backwards as well. So we feel in the event of, of, of the car actually rolling onto, onto, onto the top, then this would, uh, would keep the occupants in uh, a safety zone. 
Out of all the Tigers we've built, or had a part in building, there's only the first few that ever had Pintos in. All the rest have been Z-Tech, Z-Tech, Z-Tech. Because the Mondeo engine, which you see here, is easily available and will produce 130 brake in standard form. And on the bike calves that we use in the ignition system, 165, 170 brake. Reliable, smooth, super job. And we not only use this engine in, in, in kit cars, but they go, uh, they go in our Ford range, they go in the upgrades, uh, and they go right through. I've had them in the MGBs, I've put them into, into a lot of other cars as well. I understand as well you've got, gone well with bike carb conversions, so instead of using standard fuel injection or Webers or even aftermarket throttle bodies, the, the bike carbs have become well, very the, popular. One of, the, one of the problems about fuel injection is that, that, that you, you buy an engine for £250 and suddenly you spend £2,000 on a fuel injection system um, that uh, will give you a smooth engine. But bike carbs will give you that equally smooth performance and pickup. And, and, and how much are you looking at then? Say, for example, a bike carb conversion with a manifold and with a mega jolt system to manage it as well. Yeah, um, we do that for £770. And that's the, the carbs are already rejected because we have so much experience of them. Every car we build here goes on a rolling road, so we've built up a lot of data. And the ignition map is, is adjusted and it's pruned and it's changed. And so that's perfect as well. Well, Graham, I gather you've, uh, you've built this uh, Silver J15 uh, and started as an agent in 2010. Yeah, that's great, uh, yeah. when I talked to Jeremy uh, Phillips uh, over in Lincoln uh, about the cars. Uh, we, uh, we were impressed by uh, his knowledge of the cars. He's a very, very astute person. And uh, I must admit, I like the shape of the car. Mm. So mid-engined, uh, Ford Focus, is it, or Ford? Uh, you can use uh, the Puma engines in these, but uh, we've got a 1600, what they call Z-Tag SE, which is a Sigma engine, uh, and that mates onto a Fiesta uh, gearbox, Fiesta drive shafts. Yeah. Um, typical build cost for something like this? To do it properly, and I think it needs properly, you're looking, I think, at about £10,000 mm. to, to build it yourself. Right, and I understand you're doing a full stage of kits, are you? What's the cheapest kit? The cheapest kit is 5.6, is yeah. which, is a, which is a chassis, um, wishbones, um, engine mountings, and all the bodywork. Um, but we can also do a, a rolling chassis for £9,800, where we actually put all the panel work on, we put brakes on, we put uh, all the fuel lines in. Right, Graham, let's else. have a look at the uh, engine bay. Yeah, okay. It's a, it's a, it's a one-piece rear wing and boot cover, uh, which is very nice. Um, it's a 1.6 Ford engine, brand new. Uh, stainless steel exhaust, silencer, five-speed Fiesta gearbox. Again, running on our carburetor kit uh, with an engine management ignition system that controls everything. 